Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is gonna be more of a sit down video and I'm just gonna be talking about how I got into Barnard on a full ride, my GPA, my SAT, extracurriculars, and I'm gonna be giving you guys tips and tricks along the way of ways to either help you if you're interested in applying to Barnard or just tips and tricks of applying to college in general. You know, when I was a senior applying to different schools and doing my research, these type of videos were extremely helpful for me. I am not saying that this is what you have to do in order to go to Barnard or in order to get accepted to a school. So there is no formula to getting into a specific school in my personal opinion. I think every single individual is different in their own way. They have a different story to tell. So if you're going to get anything out of this video, I really hope it's these three things. One scores and grades are not everything and i cannot emphasize this enough you are more than a bunch of numbers on a paper one of the big things when applying to college is showing your personality like showing who you are and that's kind of hard so that's why use your college essay to your advantage use those supplements to your advantage anything that lets the college know who you are and who you are as a person like i was not valedictorian salutatorian of my school i was in the top 10 percent but see that's the thing top 10 percent in my school because it was such a large school was top like 42 kids in the in the school and i don't remember my ranking off the top of my head but I do know it was around 42, so that was my rank. Like, I was not even top five. So I'm telling you now, like, grades are not everything. So number two is if you can get involved in school, do it and acquire leadership positions in those clubs. And I'm not saying, like, <laughs> join a club and, like, automatically want to be, like, president of the club. That's like, I'll go more into detail in when I talk about like my extracurriculars. Number three, this is super corny and probably you've heard it a million times, but be genuine and be authentic. Do not lie on your application. Like, be very genuine about the things you do. Do not write what you think the college wants to hear because you're probably going to sound like 300 other candidates. Your goal when applying to these schools is to stand out. Okay, so let's get into grades, SATs, all that fun stuff. Like I mentioned before, I wasn't a top 10% of my class. I had an average of a 94 out of 100. My SAT was an 1160. I took one um, free SAT prep class with Let's Get Ready. My parents didn't have the financial means to send me to like tutoring and stuff. So most of the time I either was like watching YouTube videos or either studying on Khan Academy here and there. So something that I do think made me stand out with other candidates applying to Barnard was the fact that even before I got into high school, I had already taken three high school courses and three regions. If you're not from New York, you probably are not familiar with like what regions are. Regions are basically like state exams that you take at the end of the year and there is a certain amount from certain subjects that you need to take in order to graduate so in eighth grade i took three high school courses i took living environment u.s history and algebra so that meant that when i got into high school i was already advanced in three subjects that meant that off the bat i was taking courses with upperclassmen which also meant that i was able to graduate high school with a lot more credits than what i needed so I took three APs in high school. I took AP English, AP Calc, and AP Bio. Yeah, AP Bio. Sorry, I have to think about that. Um, I did not take all the APs that my school offered. That was a personal choice of mine. Either I didn't want to or they just didn't fit in my schedule. So honors classes. I was in a few honors classes. I was in honors English all four years of high school. I was in pre-calc, chem, and physics. My high school had a college now program 
and if you're not familiar with college now what college now is is it allows high school students to take college classes on a college campus i took a biology class at lehman college as well as a psychology class at city college so if you're a high school student in new york city talk to your guidance counselor and see if your high school actually has a college now program because i definitely think even though yeah like it's super nice to be taking college classes in high school it's a good experience because because you get to actually be in a college classroom in high school so it's just a different experience compared to AP classes that are usually just taught by faculty at the school so extracurriculars I was very involved in high school I was lucky enough to have a sister who had already gone through the college process and let me know that being involved in school was very important I do understand not everyone is able to get involved in clubs just either because they don't have the time or they have family responsibilities like it's okay i'm just gonna talk about the extracurriculars that i put down on my application i was president of the unicef chapter at my school and with unicef i was actually involved all four years of high school so i was treasurer my junior year and then i became president my senior year i was a vice president for the national honor society at my school under NHS, I did lead a monthly committee called Know Your Rights. So the committee was actually created after the 2016 election. And while it did concentrate on immigration and advocacy for undocumented youth, it was just a safe space for NHS students to just come and talk. And we talked about different ways to get involved or if they wanted to talk about a different issue that wasn't even immigration, that was always welcome there. So I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I was in NHS junior year and senior year. So something that I definitely think made me stand out in my application was being a youth leader. So I was a college youth leader for my high school junior and senior year. So what that means, if you guys are not familiar with it, which I probably think you aren't, um, I was working my school's college office through the youth leader program and so the summer before my junior year I got trained in the college application process so they explained everything that you can think of that goes into applying to colleges whether that's the application, financial aid, scholarships, all that jazz. My camera stopped recording so if the frame is off or different from the previous clip that's why. So apart from the caseload that I had, I emphasized a lot of the work that I did with helping undocumented students apply to college because undocumented students have a different pathway in regards to the application process so not everything looks the same. I'll talk more about why Helping undocumented students and the Know Your Rights Committee was very important to me and why I decided to mention that when I like, talked about my extracurriculars. But I'll talk more about that when I talk about my personal statement. So I definitely think that being a youth leader gave me a great advantage because it exposed me to the college application process early on. Like as a sophomore, I was just bombarded with all things college. So I was able to like prep and like able to start my app. I was in a peer mental program in my school for one year. It was a transition program to help freshmen in high school transition from middle school to high school. So how that worked is during my lunch periods, I would go into certain freshman classes, I have different programs laid out for um, the freshmen and a lot of it was like bonding or like tips and tricks on how to navigate high school apart from like going in during my lunch period we also had to take a class and in that class we basically prep for going into the classroom so i would actually make lesson plans and stuff like that i low-key felt like a teacher which is funny enough because i'm actually minoring in education so <laughs> that's funny I was involved in the Skills USA club at my school. I was only involved for like I think a year and a half just because actually I just didn't have the time for it and so I stopped going. I was also in mentoring and medicine and I was in their, in their community health ambassador program. I can't remember from the top of my head when I started but I do know it was more than a year and a half. I was in varsity soccer and I played for my school for I think a year 
I also did the PSAL soccer, but that was like apart from my school. Um, but that was only for like a few months because that's just how long the season lasted. I was in Fashion Cares, which was just a community service program. And I did that for, I think a year because after that one, I got involved with UNICEF more. And lastly, I was in the Beat the Odds scholarship program that the Children's Defense Fund has. And obviously I was in the one in New York. I got into the scholarship program in my junior year. So I was involved with the organization since my junior year. And to this day, I'm still involved with the organization. Fun fact, I just entered with them this past summer. I feel like this video is going to be super long. <laughs> when I was applying through the Comet app, they had a section for like, I think for awards and certifications so in that section i put down that i was in the principal's honor roll all four years and at that point i was already awarded two scholarships so i had won a bronze medal for community service for the hispanic heritage foundation as well as i was a rising star scholarship recipient for the beat the odds program now we're gonna get into supplements also, I do not know if I mentioned this before and it's kind of late in the video for me to mention it but if I keep looking down, it's because I have a notebook that I wrote down all the things that I need to say just to make sure I don't miss anything. Also, if you see a glare in my glasses, it's because I have my computer legit like right there. When you're applying through the Common App, you have your personal statement that gets sent to all the schools that you apply to right and then each school has different supplements that they ask you to fill out well they don't really ask you they require you because it's part of the application a tip that i'm gonna give you guys is write what you're comfortable writing about as well as what you want to write about do not write what your mom wants you to write what your dad wants you to write what your guidance counselor wants you to write this is your application at the end of the day and this is your story and this is your chance to tell the college who you are talk about something that impacted your life or not impacted your life talk about literally whatever you want and i'm gonna be talking about my personal statement as well as my supplement this is probably the hardest section for me to talk about just because my personal statement was very personal to me <laughs> get it personal statement personal <laughs> anyways <laughs> Anyways, my personal statement was very personal and I explained why some of the extracurriculars that I did involved undocumented youth. So the Common App has different prompts that you can choose from and I chose the first one and I'm just going to read it off my laptop. So it's some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that is so meaningful they believe that their application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, then please share your story. So I talked about the personal journey that I went through and honestly still going through about what it meant to be an immigrant in the United States. Maybe if I'm comfortable later on, I will make a video of me reading my personal statement, but as of now, I don't think so. In my personal statement, I talk about being a youth leader and why helping other undocumented students apply to college was super important to me as well as talking about the Know Your Rights Committee and the value that it had to me. So that's why I said before, only write about what you want to write about and what you're comfortable writing because I had to sit down and actually think about my experience and my story. While it was still a choice of mine, it was very hard for me to write it and to be constantly looking at it. But definitely respect your boundaries and your comfort level so barnard had three supplements and they also gave out a fourth one if you qualified for the hop program the first one was what factors influence your decision to apply to barnard college and why do you think the college would be a good match for you so basically like why barnard right once again i'm not going to get into the nitty-gritty details of what i wrote I'll give you guys a general outline of what i wrote so i I talked about community service and civic engagement and how that was a big thing in my life and honestly still is a big thing in my life right now. So I talked about my community service experience in high school and tied it to Barnard. So what I did is I researched different programs that Barnard had. So I talked about being in UNICEF and being in um, fashion cares and then how I can translate that work into Barnard 
finding a specific program at Barnard or a specific club at Barnard to help me translate the work that I did in high school to college. So number two, it was pick one woman in history or fiction to converse with for an hour and explain your choice. What would you talk about? Okay, so the person I chose was Efemelu from the Americana book. I had read Americana, I think it was the summer of my junior year. Yeah, and I completely loved it. And so I talked about um, Efemelu as a character. I talked about the Americana book. I talked about how if I had the chance to sit down with Efemelu and talk to her, I would ask about, I think... It was immigration, and her thoughts on different social movements that were going on at the time and honestly still going on to this day. Okay, so my camera just died, so once again, if the frame is off, that's why. So the third supplement question was about basically saying what you contribute to Barnard inside the classroom or outside the classroom. So in this question, I talk about how being an immigrant student navigating the college application process i realized that it's not the same for every single person so i talked about the work that i did as a youth leader helping other undocumented students apply to college and i also talked about different clubs on campus that i saw myself being involved in i didn't really talk about in like how i contribute inside the classroom it was more like outside of the classroom the fourth question was about heop and heop is basically the opportunity program at barnard um i was eligible for heop but i didn't get into barnard through the heop program it would be question if you're interested it's applicants for the heop scholarship program or are you interested in the arthur o eve higher education program what do you hope to achieve by participating in this program so basically what I talked about was being a low income student, how I did not have access to SAT prep um, because my parents couldn't afford it. Um, I also talked about their big sister mentoring program, which once again, I'm not in the HOP program, so I'm not sure how that works, but I did some research about it and wrote about that program. I emphasized how the HOP program would help me academically and socially transition from high school to college. So that's basically it. Um, if there's anything you would want to ask me specifically about, like leave a comment and I'll reply answering if I can. If you guys like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video.